Hey guys, this is your girl Najwa. Thanks for being back on my channel. Um, if you have not already, please do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell so you always know whenever I post a video. Um, so today I want to talk to you about Aaron Carter um, and how he is really a, really a public service announcement just for poor mental health. Um, this is something that we need to talk about. I've also talked about in other videos the um, toxic culture of the way that we deal with celebrities. I feel like that plays into it. So I'm just going to get into this. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that I saw a really disturbing tweet from Aaron Carter. So Aaron Carter put out a tweet and he never ever said anything after it. Let me just find it for you. He basically put out a tweet that said that um, his older sister Leslie, the one who, who passed away um, back in 2012, I believe it is, he basically said that, that she had molested him. And after that, he never said anything else about it. So he said, you know, this is at Aaron Carter on Twitter. He said, my sister, and, and I'm sorry, trigger warning for those people that I didn't, I'm, I should give you a trigger warning a little bit ago. Um. He said, my sister raped me from the age of 10 to 13 years old when she wasn't on her medications and I was abused not only sexually by her, but by my first two backup dancers when I was eight years old. And my brother abused me my whole life. So that's the first sort of thing that I want to add in here. The second thing is, is that there was a restraining order that was put against Aaron from Nick Carter and Angel Carter, his twin sister. Um, and they basically said that Aaron, I won't read that one, but they basically said that Aaron Carter, um, they found out that he was diagnosed schizophrenic and bipolar um, two years ago. <clears throat> and that he um, apparently had thoughts of killing babies. He had thoughts of killing babies and... Um, Nick took that as a personal, um, seem, something personal towards himself and his own wife, Lauren Kitt, who was pregnant at the time. And so that's where that whole, oh, he has thoughts of harming my un unborn child thing. And so they put a restraining order against him. The third thing that I want to talk about is at one point on Aaron Carter's um, lives, which if you guys want to follow this this person named Lulu Lime Nine on YouTube, it's it's a whole record of all of the craziness that went on in Aaron Carter's on his Instagram lives. He went live on Instagram on YouTube a whole lot, and um, you know I have compassion. I look at those videos and have compassion. That channel really kind of uh, it's very. How do I want to say this? They they're not masking what they feel about Aaron on that channel. You know, from just the titles. There's there there's no commentary. It's literally just showing some of the lives from from Aaron's um from his social media. But um yeah, I I just have a little bit of a different view. So at on one of those, he was he was literally with the baby in his hand, with Melanie Martin's baby in the hand. And Melanie was in the background saying, get off the internet, please. You know, and, and this is someone who was doing this compulsively almost every day, filming these lives every single second of his day, every day of his life. And he was looking pretty much inebriated, not sober on almost every one of them. It looked probably like a combination of huffing and prescription pills and alcohol and weed. I mean, even this, that, that's a whole lot for one body to be to sustain. Um, our bodies are temples, God, guys. Like, you, you know, it's okay to have a little bit of fun every now and then, but our bodies are temples, and, and Aaron Carter has proof that you can't just keep running on drugs and hot air and, and think that you're going to make it to a nice, ripe old age. It's not going to happen. Um, the, there was one video where, you know, they say that he was holding that baby hostage. He's like, God, 
the baby, Melanie is in the background saying, get off the internet. And there's there's several videos with, with his ex fiance Melanie, in there, which I find that, all of that with Melanie really heartbreaking too. My heart really goes out to her. And the, 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 all of these, the comments are just coming in, you know, and he's saying, you're blocked, you're blocked, you're blocked. And people say that he harassed a lot of his the a lot of his followers a lot of his fans but some of these people were really trolls they they really were bullying Aaron when clearly this is someone who had drug addiction problems mental health problems and he just needed you know he needed some he needed some outreach support he needed some support he needed like therapy he needed people to be saying hey we think that something is wrong we think that you should be seeing your therapist you know not people saying you know, the nasty stuff that they were saying in the comments. So I, I agree with him there. There's another video where Aaron, he's talking to his mom, to, and his mom and, and Aaron uh, are going back and forth about how Nick is a horrible person. And, you know, Aaron talks about this one time that when he was 18, his dad basically told him he needed to give him $100,000 right there and took a gun and he no longer had hearing in his left ear, you know, because his dad shot a gun and his sisters and brothers jumped him at that point. Now, again, schizophrenia, and he also had multiple personality disorder. Both of those, I'm not, actually, I'm not sure if it's both multiple personality disorder and schizophrenia. But I do know that one of those personality disorders, people can often reconstruct memories. They have a different memory of things. And as someone who has a family member close to me who has bipolar disorder and who, you know, I've watched and with great sadness, some similar, some similar experiences, you know, um, yeah. Sometimes these people just, they, they, you know, people with multiple personality disorder, with bipolar disorder, with, um, you know, schizophrenia, they often just really aren't in their right mind. And they just need that right, um, what do I want to say? They need that right support for them, that right flavor of support. And... I think that this toxic culture where we feel like we own celebrities and we feel like just because we're around behind a, a, a faceless, nameless profile or even a profile with a name and a face, but still not in front of a person, you know, we feel like because we're behind the safety of our, our persona online that all, all the things that your parents taught you growing up just goes out of the window of being kind, being nice to someone, not judging a book by its cover. It's like all of that stuff goes out the window. And this was clearly someone who had addiction and drug, uh, you know, addiction problems and mental health problems, you know. And he talks on one live about Angel wanting to have putting, put him in a concert conservatorship. And I can understand that. I can understand that. I mean, with Britney Spears, no. I think that Britney Spears needed a little bit of therapy, and that was it. I, I feel like her tenure conservatorship was just, like, imprisoning her and putting her on a wheel like a gerbil, just, like, make money. But in Aaron Carter's case, I think maybe that would have... That would have been good. I mean... Because we see it. We saw his life spiral out of control over the course of really 10 years. I feel like it, it really started about 10 to 15 years ago. And I went back and look at, looked at the House of Carters. And I don't want to get into Jane Carter's relationship with Aaron Carter's dad who sadly passed away. You know, that that is between two people. And I don't really like to touch marriages. I don't like to touch marriages or people's romantic partnerships you know that's between two people and I feel like we just don't have any business there but looking at that you know knowing the sh constraints and the strains of being a child star you know knowing the demands of those schedules and then you know not even having a normal childhood not having that kind of childhood where you can go to the mall and blend in you know not have people run up to you walk up to you and stuff which 
I'm sure that a lot of that was good, and I know that Aaron loved his fans, but I know some parts of that probably was also very overwhelming. The demands of the schedules, the, the body image and body issue demands of you needing to feel like you need to maintain this certain look, to maintain um, this certain standard of beauty, like not even being able to go to school, you know, what, what would have happened if Aaron could have, for instance, graduated from university? Like what would have happened if he would have gotten a really cool scholarship, you know, in this world where maybe he wasn't a star? Um, and then tr add on top of that him experiencing abuse or possibly experiencing abuse as a child because it's like we really will never know unless some other members of the Carter family that come out and speak. Oh, that's what I want to add. Now, there was an, in, an, an interview. I don't like to speculate on stuff. I don't like to make up stuff or, you know, just theorize on stuff on my own about people's relationships. Whether that be romantic partnerships, friendships, uh, sibling relationships, whatever. But if people come out and say something, I will make commentary on that. And Aaron Carter's sister, BJ, she did come out and she spoke about his molestation claim. And she said that um, it was actually the other way around. Like it was not Leslie who molested Aaron. It was Aaron who molested Leslie. And we do know that with personality disorders, like multiple personality disorder, like schizophrenia, people can have like a, rec a different recollection of memories. I don't know. But I do know that looking at Aaron and looking at his, his history, at his life, I think he had a hard, hard life. And I think we got to be, we got to be sensitive to that. And we have to take some part of responsibility knowing that he's not here anymore. Because in the moment where people are down, that's not when you kick them. That's not when you shame them. That's not when you body shame them. That's not when you um, try and minimize their experiences with addiction or mental health. Those are the moments when we, you say, we support you. You know, we, we hope that you get better. Maybe if you want to say, I don't agree with some things that you've done in your past, but I know you've had issues with your mental health and I'm wishing you all the best. That would go over so much more than just kicking someone when they're down. And I feel like so much of this, this celebrity culture, that's what we do. We, we get off on it when people are not happy and it's really not a good look. Um, so yeah, with what BJ said, I like I said, I really feel like we won't ever know the full story unless people within Aaron Carter's family, you know, namely Jane and namely Nick, since um, I feel like there's a lot of mystery around them. And you know what? Even though Jane has had her problematic moments, I feel really, really bad for her because I can see that she loved her kids with a certain amount of veracity, a, a amount of um, fierceness. I can see that. I really can. Um, but when you look at Jane and you look at Kris Jenner, for example, I think the difference that you're seeing is that, um, well, I don't know. I, I feel like the difference of what you're seeing is trauma. Generational trauma is a B-I-T-C-H. And, and I don't know what, what Aaron's parents' childhood hoods were like, but this stuff doesn't just come out of nowhere. It really doesn't. It doesn't come out of nowhere. So, um, yeah. If, if, if Jane and, and Aaron Carter's dad, I'm sorry, I'm slipping on his name. If they um, experienced hardships in their childhood, they could have carried some of that same generational trauma into raising um, their kids. And then their kids could have done the exact same thing. So, generally, we need to be better. Guys, Stop dismissing mental health. It's it's real and it's a thing. You know, if, if people need uh, support groups like Al-Anon, Nar-Anon, uh, Mar-Anon, whatever it is, you know, that's okay. If people need therapy, that's okay. But, you know, oftentimes families, I think, especially from the South, because I know that they are from Florida and I'm from Alabama, which is very close, and... Um, 
I grew up in Atlanta, but I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. And knowing Southern values, there's also that sort of taboo that still exists in the South about mental health. A lot of the South is just about, you know, just shut up, grin and bear, you know, like mental health, don't talk about that, that hooey, you know, just, you know, go and do what you need to do and get on and on with it and just, you know, there's a lot of that in the culture, but some of that needs to be pulled out. And I think that um, there's another part of Southern culture about family, family sticking together, no matter what, no matter what. And I think when you do that, when you stick to your fa beside your family members, no matter what, sometimes family will go and do something that is ethically not right that is not right and then what's the next thing you know you covering up something for your family oh my god we just finished outer banks i know that this is a little bit of a tangent we just finished outer banks on netflix and i'm going to do a video about that soon um but that right there really shows how families you know can stick to each other stick stick up for each other to a fault and then that builds into resentment and then after that you know, somebody who would have always thought of themselves as a family person, like Aaron Carter, you know, if you guys hear the washing machine, I'm sorry, um, they might turn into a person who is completely cut off from family members. And why? You know, what would have been better? You know, instead of sticking up for your family member when they have done something that has been unethical or um, morally questionable or even legally questionable, um do the right thing instead of just sticking up to your family for a fault. If somebody needs to go to, like I said, that support group, if it's Alcoholics Anonymous, if it's Narcotics Anonymous, you know, whatever, if it's Marijuana Anonymous, that exists, yes, it's the thing. Um, if they need to go to some therapy sessions, if they need to get on medication, um, if you see something is wrong, say something is wrong. I, I feel bad. I feel really, really bad. You know, and from Nick's standpoint, I get where he's coming from. I get that urge to just shut it off. There's a problem, and I don't want to deal with it, and I feel threatened. I'm just going to shut it off. But going back and looking at House of Carters, how, and, and even young, 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 young interviews, like when Aaron was like 12 or 13, old interviews with Nick and Aaron, you really can see that glimmer in Aaron's eye of how much love and respect and reverence he uh, he held for his his big brother and his dad. You know, it's it's oh, I'm about to cry. It's it's very very sad to watch, and I know that they are probably going to be dealing with that for the rest. I uh, know I don't say probably they're going to be dealing with that for the rest of their lives. Imagine how things could have gone a, a different way if you know in the past instead of um, completely rejecting Aaron, pushing him away, getting restraining orders, whatever. Imagine what would have happened if not only his family, but us as a community, you know, a community of people who we're, we're connected all across the globe through these little tendrils of the internet. Imagine if we would have come more from a place of saying, Aaron, we want you to get help. We want to help you get to that place. Imagine if that would have happened. He really might still be here today. And I'm not talking about just in the past two or three years where things have spiraled drastically. Even ten years ago, you know, even when he got that first um, driving while under the influence, you know. Imagine if, if back then they said, hey, what can we do for you? You know, do you do you want to let's let's we need, I think you need to see a therapist, but we're going to be here for you to support you through that journey. I think you need to join a support group. Have you thought about your education? Have you thought about looking into going to university? I really think you could benefit from that. If that would have been what we did, from the start, things might be very different. And so um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Please let me know what you think. Um, oh, and also, well, I, ta I talked about this in another video already, but I think Jane posting those photos is just her grief. I think it's just her grief, guys. Um, very, very, very sad to look at. But again, your body is a temple. Take care of it. Your mind is a temple. Be careful for what you put inside of it. And, um, I'm going to leave it there. Rest in peace, Aaron. I'm always going to remember you. Rugrats in Paris was one of my favorite movies going up. That life is a party. I love it. 
hope you're okay up there. So, um, guys, if you haven't already, click the like and subscribe. Click the bell so you always know when I post a video. 